exorcisms. How many exorcisms about have you performed? Well, there are different levels of exorcism because the church says there's four different types of extraordinary demonic activity. There's demonic infestation, which is the presence of evil in a location or associated with an object. Mm. There can be demonic vexation, which are physical attacks that somebody's receiving. There can be bites and bruises and marks that appear on the skin. People might even remember the incisions of letters from movies they've watched that will pop up on the skin. You've seen that? You've seen yep. letters just on yep. appear on someone's skin? And how do you know that somebody didn't self-mutilate or that somebody didn't do that to them? How do you know that's a spirit? Because they appear right in front of me. So it's not like they walk You're in. sitting in front of someone and just letters appear on their skin? Yes. Wow. See, right then and there, I'd be like, I need a coffee break. I need something. Maybe not coffee, but something. Wow, that's... And then I was going to say, then there's demonic obsession, which are mental attacks, and then demonic possession, which is when the demon takes control of the person's body. So if we're talking about the actual demon can take, taking control of a body, how many of those would you say you do in a year or overall? Just, I need to, a ballpark number of how much exposure you'd have. have like, to this. like one a year. One a year. Yes. Okay, so it's it's rare. Is it rare that people, we know that possession itself is rare, but is it rare that people come to you and claim they're being possessed? Or is that much more common, that filtration process? What does it look like? Well, because I'm publicly known, there are many exorcists who prefer to remain anonymous. But when my bishop appointed me, he wanted me to, to go out and to help educate mm -hmm. the faithful and even other people about what the church believes and teaches about exorcism. And because I'm publicly known, I probably receive a higher volume of inquiries. I currently average about 70 a week. In 70 inquiries a week? From people all over the United States and even other parts of the world who are seeking the help of the church. And f then you begin the filtration process of like who who's really potentially possessed. How does that work then? Do you involve mental health professionals to kind of gauge this? Do you do it yourself? How do you decide which cases at that point of those 70 a week merit your attention in a spiritual way? Well, as an exorcist, I cannot function outside of my diocese. So I can't function outside of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis because technically the bishop of the diocese is the exorcist. So I act in his name. For me to function outside of in, the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, I would need permission of the other local bishop. So if somebody contacts me from outside of Indianapolis, what I try to do is connect them with a priest or someone in their area. Mm -hmm. So I try to help them find a local connection. But for people who are local, yeah. there is a process. So What does that look like? There's a protocol that we use in the United States so step one of the protocol would be for the person to have a psychiatric evaluation. Sometimes people fight back on that. But the truth is, if somebody's really dealing with the demonic, they need to be in a good place mentally before going through the rite of the church. And then also there, there needs to be a physical examination by a medical doctor to rule out any physical cause. Third step of the protocol, I would meet with the person and do an intake questionnaire trying to determine how did evil enter into this person's life? One might say that we want to isolate the presence of the demonic in the person so that we know how best to fight it. I would look for four signs of possibility of true demonic possession. There are four things. So it's the ability to speak and understand languages otherwise unknown to the individual, having superhuman strength beyond the normal capacity of the individual, having elevated perception, so the person is saying things that they should not otherwise know, which would lead me to know that that's a demon speaking and not that person as an individual. And then an aversion to anything of a sacred nature, such as being blessed with holy water, being shown a crucifix, having the Bible read in front of them, being in a church, you name it. Anything that's sacred that would cause a negative reaction could be the sign of a uh, demonic presence. And then step five of the protocol is the most important. It's helped the person to resume the spiritual life or to find God for the very first time. Because as an exorcist, even though I'm a Catholic priest, more than half the people who contact me are not Catholic. Mm. So they come from other Christian faith traditions, other world religions, or no faith background whatsoever. But it's not enough just to cast the demon out. It's very, very important that God has to be invited in. 
I've seen a growing trend today with faith is in decline in the lives of many people that people who believe they're dealing with the demonic will now view the exorcist as a type of a magician. Mm -hmm. So people believe that I have special powers or abilities or I have a few tricks up my sleeve that I can make all their problems go away. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, God is the one who's going to do that and he will act through the church and through the church's ministers. If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here or you can catch the full episode right here.